Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover a very important topic that concerns the governance of space. We are talking about the future. But before that, let me tell you that the governance framework keeps changing according to the needs of the time. And same is the case of space. The earlier interest of man was on inquisitiveness. The man was focused on exploration related activities. He was interested if there was water on Mars or not. So he would send space probes and likewise the initiatives were there. And then comes the phase where the man was interested in using the space as an resource. He was concerned in space applications. He was using the satellite imagery to identify the new weather trends. He was using it for internet or as well as communication technologies, the DTH that is there. And now we are in a phase where the man has gone way ahead. Elon Musk says that there can be a human colony in Mars. He's advocating commercial mining along with Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. So in this context, there is a need to have a relook as to how the space is being governed and will be. And in this context, the NASA's proposed Artemis Accords are very significant. And we also need to consider the implications for India. So in this video, we are going to analyze the entire issue. But before that, let me tell you, you are watching IS Primers with me, Shubhashi Singh Rehal. Now coming to Artemis. Artemis was basically a program that was initiated by NASA. NASA which proposed to have a manned mission in moon by 2024. So a first woman and man of color would have been sent. And this it proposes would be with the help of international partnerships. So that it is sustainable as well as there is a sense of cooperation amongst the world countries. And it says, NASA says that it proposes that this knowledge of sending a manned mission with the help of international partnerships will enable future cooperation. And there could be future such missions such as sending a man to Mars. Now for a country to partner, for a country as well as a commercial player to partner with NASA, he has to sign the Artemis Accords. So this is mandatory. Now these are a set of rules, these are a set of guidelines that are set for the international partners of NASA. It is believed that it is a step up of the existing governance framework. The existing framework that comes from the Outer Space Treaty. The Outer Space Treaty was a UN based treaty that was signed in 1967. It was the time of the Cold War and thereby it says that space is a global common and it should be used only for peaceful purposes. And it also says that uh, nobody, no country can have a sovereign claim on the space or any celestial body. Now according to NASA, the Artemis Accords are in continuation of the Outer Space Treaty, but in a more detailed manner. So these are the 10 principles or rules that are set for the partners. So one, that any space initiative would be for peaceful purposes only. And all partners need to ensure that there is a transparency. That is, they should be public as well as whatever projections, whatever activities are done, they should be in public domain. Now since various countries are working together with NASA, so there should be interoperability in the space infrastructure. Interoperability basically means that the two players or various players can work in conjunction, they can work together. And to work together, it is important to have a common set of standards. Common set of standards. Let me give you one example. You know the plug points, the plugs that we use, the ones in US and ones in India are different. So there is, if we had same set of standards globally, it would be very easy to travel and use the connections. 
Next is emergency assistance. Now God forbid there is some crisis or a rescue mission has to be sent. Then international partner whosoever is more suitable to do that should provide that aid. So inter emergency assistance. Next, there is a talk when we talk about the Artemis, there is a talk of sending space objects for various activities. So for in that case, there should, there should be a provision of registration of space objects. So there is a proper inventory of this. Then whatever findings are there, whatever information has been gathered by NASA or the international partners that should be shared, that should be released and shared equitably. So that will encourage better partnership and cooperation amongst the countries. Then it suggests that there should be an emphasis on protecting space heritage. Space, space heritage means those landmarks which are of significance. For example, the landing site of the Apollo mission by NASA, right? So these are important uh, places that needs to be marked and preserved. Then it also highlights these three things are of particular concern that it highlights that space has its own important resources, right? The space spectrum or the orbit space or it could be about the mining processes, the land on the space. So space has those resources and these have to be allocated to different players, different countries or commercial players. So this should be done. And when that activity is taking place of exploiting that resource, there is always a concern of conflict amongst member players. It could be partner or NASA, whatever. So in that case, there should be a resolution mechanism. First of all, there should be attempt that conflict does not take place only. So for that, let's say a piece of land has been given on space to two different partners. So whosoever claims it, it will be allocated to it. So there will be a mechanism, there will be a body that decides that and then there would be an adequate safe zone around it. Next comes the issue of orbital debris and spacecraft disposal. Now people are going to the space, right? So rockets are going, satellites are going and as a result, ultimately they will be redundant. So they will float in the space and that will cause pollution. So there is a need to have a proper policy so that the waste disposal is done correctly in a sustainable and a responsible manner. So this is all about the Artemis Accords. Now this is a very good initiative given the fact that it provides a framework. It is a way forward and it provides a framework for the future. And it covers the issues so that there should be, there can be a good cooperation amongst the countries but then it is not without its concerns so concern number one it is a u.s led initiative yes nasa is the space agency it's a government body and it is the governed by it is governed by the u.s government so let me put it this way we are talking about artemis accord is something like this nasa is at the center which means u.s is at the center and all countries like let's say India, Germany, right? Different countries are having a deal with, they sign uh, Artemis Accords. So they are signing the Artemis Accords with NASA, which is a US led initiative. So it is not a multilateral forum, it is a US led initiative. And thereby US is at the focus, US is at an advantage over here. And that is what the NASA's scientists have also said when they came up with the Artemis Accords that it aims to put US interest at the first. And in terms of space also, it should be a US led initiative. So it keeps US in the front and US interests ahead of the other countries and it is a bilateral initiative. Unlike the Outer Space Treaty, which was a UN led initiative where world countries are together. But in this case, it is between US and India. So there is a tendency of bilateralism over here. So this is a concern. And let's say there are many issues that are not very specifically stated. For example, what would be the set of standards? So here again, US would be at advantage given that it is US led. 
and also when it comes to allocation of space resources, uh, deconfliction of activities and orbital debris. So this is a matter of concern that needs to be addressed. Now coming to the most important point, what should be the India's position? Should India sign with the Artemis Accords or not? That's the big question. And it, when it comes to UPSC, we cannot say yes or no. We have to give a rational argument. We have to give a basis in a subjective manner. So let's come to the big question over here. Well, let us look at this way. India has its unique position in the space world. It has its own space prowess, right? India has this uh, amazing uh, record of the PSLV satellite where it can launch satellites at a very low cost and a reliable manner. So much so that even developed countries like NASA, Canada, etc. are getting the satellites launched from India's PSLV. So India has an advantage over here. And India is also looking at the commercialization part. It is looking at commercial players entering into the space arena. So talking about the commercial arena and India having, having its interest in the space domain. So having a seat in the Artemis Accord is going to be beneficial given the fact that India will have benefit of interoperability. India will have advantage in terms of allocation of resources, space resources, uh, deconfliction, etc. Further, this will also help uh, seal deal with countries that have already signed Artemis Accords. So many countries have already signed. So for transfer of technology, for funding activities, especially for the private sector or the commercial sector, this will be beneficial. And in this regard, let me tell you that India's record on space is not completely clean. India has yet to launch their lander mission. Chandra Chandrayaan program that was there, Chandrayaan 2, was a failure. But if India sides on the Artemis Accord, it will get the technology, you know, it will get the know-how of landing the satellite on the moon surface, surface of the moon or any planet. So for India's own landed missions, man on Mars, MOM, on those uh, initiatives, it will be greatly beneficial. But in given the benefits that India has, using the Artemis Accord, it should be mindful of the fact that it is with concerns. One, it is a US-led initiative. It is of bilateral nature. That means the benefits from Artemis Accords may be as long, just suggesting it, as long as India has good relations with USA. So it is dependent on it. And given India's independent nature of foreign policy, India believes in being non-aligned. So India has good relations with Russia and China. So let's say India decides to buy missiles S-400 S from Russia, then US-India relations get affected. What in that case? So this needs to be addressed. Then it is against India's stated position, publicly stated position, that it should be a UN-led initiative. This is a US-led initiative. So it is not truly multilateral. So at this point of time, we can only say that India needs to look forward to the Artemis Accord, but it should treat with caution and negotiate its concerns with US as well as all relevant stakeholders. So this is all we have on the Artemis Accords. Thank you for streaming into IS Primers and you're watching this with me, Shubhashish Singh Rehal. And please do like, share, subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Bye-bye. Take care.